Hi everyone and welcome back to that UFO podcast special preview show for you dropping this evening. Uh, with me are the directors for the latest groundbreaking documentary series about to start on MGM Plus Beyond UFOs and the Unknown. The series premieres this Sunday October 27th 10 p.m. Eastern and 10 p.m. Pacific, like I say, on the MGM Plus streaming network uh, with weekly episodes through to November 17th. But listen, let's get to the directors of said series. I've got Paul Crowder and Mark Munro. Welcome to the podcast, gents. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us. Nice to be very here. good, very good to have you both on. Um, and like I say, the series comes out in a couple of days' time, depending on when, when folks listen to this. So, uh, I'm going to ask you both just to get, like, give a little bit of background on yourselves. Uh, if we can start with Paul first, and if you can just include any interest, if any, in the UFO topic. Well, I'm uh, big into UFOs, have been my whole life, always wanted to see them, still haven't. I uh, let's check the skies out every night. Still nothing. My wife's seen one. She's had an, a really, really serious uh, experience. So, um, you know, I take her word for that. And uh, so I'm all into it. You know, I've been making documentaries and uh, for about 25 years now. I've been working in uh, TV a little bit longer than that. I met Mark. Mark and I have worked together uh, for that long. We, we met uh, in, my, in our early TV days in late 90s, 97, 98. And worked together ever since, and uh, you know, documentaries is, is what we we like to tell stories, like to tell great stories, and we like to tell subjects that we're interested in. And obviously, uh, for me, this is a big interest, and so it was great to be a part of this. And yourself, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as Paul, you know, said we've known each other a long time, worked together a long time. I can't say that I, you know, uh, have ever had an experience or seen a UFO. Uh, I'm a casual fan. I think more from the story point of view. I love those big films, right? Close Encounters and, and anything that has to do with space. Um, I, I eat that stuff up. I really love it. And in terms of, um, you know, storytelling, this is fertile territory. <laughs> this is fun ground, especially these last few years as the world and the movement has kind of changed. It makes it a lot more fun to investigate these things. I, I think, um, you know, I'm a character first kind of kind of guy. And, and these are real people with real stories who spent a large part of their lives looking into this and, and telling the rest of us there's something to see here. There's something to investigate here. And so that makes it quite fun. I, I was a journalist to, to begin with before I, I met Paul, before I got into docs and, and television. Um, and so I'm always looking at, at the conflict, at the, at the questions that, that, that matter to all of us or that can relate to, to all of us. So that's how I got into it. I'll throw the floor open then for this next question. Why, why UFOs? Why this series? Why now? I think Mark, uh, you know, some of the reasons Mark said that since 2017, when the big story broke in the um, in the New York Times and, and the Politico magazine, um, it just opened the floodgates to it all because here you now have substantiated people saying these things are real. The government are saying, yeah, we do have a program, have had a program for years. Um, the fact that it's not somebody uh, out in a rural area on a street on their own with no other witnesses, you've actually got you know, high technology machinery capturing these things on cameras while they're flying around these, um, you know, jets going three, four hundred miles an hour. So it's that just opens the floodgates to everybody now. So academia can come in and not be scared of how it's going to reflect on you if you went down that path. You know, so that it opened it to every aspect of being able to look at this. So that also lends to the rest of the series, which is not just about UFOs, but the, the mind, how much of seeing a UFO might be connected <clears throat> to your medical makeup of your, your brain into dementiality, um, mm -hmm. all these different options for that. But also people have had near-death experiences, people have had out-of-body experiences, people have had um, remote viewing, all of that stuff is covered in this series. And so as far as why now it's always getting there's always new information every day there's more to explore more to know and so it's a very very hot topic in that and an ever moving uh target as well Marco, yeah just to underline that you know people people might look at this and go oh you know 
the go fast video or the tic tac videos from the from the navy they came out many years ago several years ago now 2007 into 2017 what we're really seeing is the consequence of that and paul brought it up but i'll underline it a little bit further and 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 when the government says hey there's something happening here it's legitimate we're looking into it it's it's worthy of investigation when that happens as paul mentioned you know th these other huge institutions of, of of life spring to life right and academia has uh, latched onto this and and in in a way you know for decades people with tenure or people had big questions about the world or the universe or how life works they were intimidated probably to to vocalize this as a portal into those questions, right? Because of the stigma, because of the possibility that you lose your job, you lose your tenure, you'd be laughed out of uh, whatever uh, level of expertise you've gained in life, right? Now the genie is out of the bottle. And what you're really seeing, uh, yes, the government is making moves. Yes, there's a new office, there's more money, the politicians are all talking about it. But, but more than that, you have uh, scholars of religion, uh, you have huge institutions, uh, you know, I'm talking about uh, Yale, Harvard, Stanford, Rice, that are all uh, have tenured professors who say this is a worthy topic for investigation. Now you're going to have generations of students, young people who are following in those footsteps. You have kids going to college now taking UFO studies like that's a thing. It wasn't a thing six, seven, eight years ago. And so I think why now is, is that this this movement has sparked based on this revelation from the government that there's, there's something here we don't understand and we should we should do everything we can to figure it out so paul you've got a, a vested interest in the ufo topic and you've got a, a partner who has had an experience which makes it even more real and you know genuine for yourself mark you've mentioned you're more casual to it so i'll stick with mark then for the first asking this question the the cast list shall we call it dr gary nolan leslie kane ryan graves tim gallaudet Brian Bender, Kirsten Gillibrand, Jacques Vallée, Jeff Kripal, Whitley Strieber, Hal Putoff, Chris Mellon, and others. Did you know a lot of those names already? Uh, and what was it like starting to work with those people? I did know uh, a good deal of the names, not all of them, but I did know a good deal of the names. And I think, again, this shows exactly what I just mentioned in the last answer, the kind of opening up, right? Some of these people uh, in, in years past may have been reticent to speak to speak on camera. The fact that I could call or we could call, uh, you know, Adam Schiff's office and say, hey, we want to talk about UFOs. And he'd say yes, like immediately. Or Tim Burchett or uh, Gillibrand. You know, these are uh, leading politicians in America. The fact that this is a, a, um, a topic on the agenda, on the table, that their constituents are curious about, that they're... Uh, efforting to, to write uh, um, bills and fund uh, efforts to learn more about them, right, shows what a different world this is. And I think, um, you know, being able to get Gary Nolan and Jacques Vallée and Hal Putoff, I mean, these guys for, you know, Nolan more recently, but Vallée and Putoff, for decades, they've been carrying the water of this issue, facing ridicule, Whitley Strieber too facing horrific ridicule, right? And, and from many corners of the world. And now suddenly they're incredibly credible. And if you look back at the things they've said and the things they've written, the things they've done, it makes it all the more interesting. Paul, do you want to come in on that list of names? You'll be very familiar with them. I'm sure the detail, the work they've done over the years and decades as well. Yeah, I mean, especially people like Jacques Vallée, you know, he was a character in Close Encounters. So when, when that film, film came out, I was like first in line to go see that <clears throat> at the local theater. I was lucky I worked there, so I, <laughs> I was able to, you know. But anyway, um, you know, Jacques Vallée has a character. It's played by Francois Truffaut. Um, and that's his character is based on Jacques Vallée. So um, to have somebody of his stature, he's been writing books about um, interdimensionality uh, since the 60s. He's been involved in UFOs. He had a UFO experience when he was young in Paris. Uh, you know, looking out of the library, uh, uh, his mom had seen the same thing. So it, there was a lot of, uh, um, he's had an involvement with this, Project Blue Book, etc. Hal Putoff was another person who's been involved with that, with remote viewing through the 70s out of Stanford University. These people have been doing it and know so much about it. Know, 
literally where all the bodies are buried, if you like. They know what's real. They know who the credible folk are, who the people who are, you know, taking advantage of this situation and uh, claiming to be more credible than they are. But they have a plethora of information and so much perception on this that they're incredible people to be able to have included in now uh, series, which I really think sets this series apart from other ones is because we have uh, such high level scholars, government people, pilots and everybody, all of that, all of the the information they can give you, people, Whitley Strieber, Jay King, all these people who have not only had experiences, but have gone on to really reach out to the community and to allow other people to come forward and say, yes, I've had that experience and not be scared to giving them forums, giving them um, places for that. So these people that we have got to talk to just give us such a wealth of knowledge. It's fantastic. There aren't many subjects on the planet, I don't think, with as passionate a, a fan base as the UFO topic. It can be incredibly divisive. It can be incredibly harmonious and everything in between. So podcasts like this... I've got listeners who have been involved in the topic for decades, or viewers, you know, that are, they, they live and breathe UFOs. Others dip in and out. Some people listening and watching this right now will be new to the topic, literally weeks, and just starting to find things out for themselves. So whoever wants to come in, I'd love to know, who is this series for in your eyes? Well, hopefully, I mean, it's a big tent and it's, uh, like you say, there's new people that come to this story all the time. And, you know, Paul and I, regardless of uh, the topic, we've always tried to make uh, films and projects that pull a large number of people in that have a broad, uh, you know, um, interest. Um, so hopefully it appeals to all of them. But that is always the fine line, right? You, you want to have enough credibility, enough uh, of the old school information that, that the people who are very knowledgeable this can watch this and take something from it, while also not dumbing it down, you know, too much for them. Uh, but enticing those new to the sub subject to get in. So I think that's why, you you know, it's it's important to have people, people like Jake uh, Christopher King, this this younger guy who had an experience, had many couple experiences in his life, and he's doing something about it, right? He, he's inspired and influenced by Whitley Strieber and by others in this space, and he's figuring out a way to create a new platform, a digital platform for people who have had experiences to connect with one another, which you couldn't do you know, when Whitley Strieber um, wrote Communion, there wasn't very easy for him to to uh, communicate and connect with others who had maybe like experiences, similar experiences. So you feel isolated. So you begin to question your own sanity. So you also, you know, if you do go public with it, which a lot of these people don't want to go public, right? They, they, they don't want to, um, you know, admit or, or talk about something that is very hard for them to explain. It just opens them up, at least in decades past, for incredible ridicule. And so to have, uh, you know, J. Christopher King come on and talk about this platform, which you can remain anonymous, but yet you can find people who've had similar things happen to you. This is the new world we're entering. So I hope that uh, the series, you know, has enough for both the, the longtime hardcore enthusiasts and you know, the next 16, 17, 18 year old who, who reads a book or sees something online and goes, wow, I want to learn more. Do you want to come in on that, Paul, or do you want me to follow up on the next one? Yeah, yeah follow I think we pretty much he covered it all right there, I think. Yeah, no, that's fine then, because I'd love to know your thoughts then on the four episodes we've got. I, I felt the first episode was bringing people up to speed on here's the last six or seven years and it's bang 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 you know the hearings the names the stories and i think it's something i've mentioned on the podcast before a lot has happened in a very short space of time that i don't think people of the social media generation always completely appreciate you know if nothing happens for a few days it's a quiet period the topic's dead i'm dipping out when it's when it used to be years or decades with no information second episode it felt to me starting to bring in more experience or stuff whitley streber comes in at the end of the first you start to find out more about him. And then throughout, we've got a mix of the study of materials, experiencers, USOs, what's happening now, the history of the topic. How did you find juggling so much information across four episodes, but also in the format you've brought it to life? Well, I mean, I think 
you know, as you stated, uh, episode one was very much, you have to bring everyone up to speed. Where are we now? Where, where are we, what's our uh, jumping off point? So having all of the stuff uh, regarding the 2017 news story <clears throat> and being able to have the pilots and the hearing from last year that was um, to include all of, of that really helps put you in a place of where we're at. But we also come in on the episode one from a more scientific point straight out the gate. And we talked to Gary Nolan, who had this exp uh, experience. He's working away. He's a cancer research guy, incredibly knowledgeable and well-respected in his field. And these two guys show up out of the blue one day and say, look, uh, we've got these scans we want you to look at We're from the FBI. Um, could you do that? And he said, yeah, what, what's it about? And he said, what's that? it's about UFO experiences. And he thought he was getting pumped. You know, he's looking around going, where's the camera? So, you, you know, it, it, he was completely like sideswiped by this, but then went into all this research and discovered all these similarities and things that you could put it to. Some of it was, uh, was down to um, Havana syndrome. There are other things. He had these scans where they all had a similar thing going in uh, on on the scans that looked like um, multiple sclerosis, but it, they were non-progressing. It wasn't actually developing the multiple sclerosis. It was just a similar scan. So, but they'd all had these experiences. So, it, there was this tie-in. Okay, now he's intrigued. And what's happened is he's now gone on and on and just delved deeper and deeper into this subject and is very knowledgeable about the whole thing. But he had had experiences when he was a kid, and he was. Uh, uh, thought he had aliens in his bedroom when he was a little boy and mom and dad said he had dreaming son don't worry about it and it kind of stopped had another experience when he was a teenager delivering newspapers and was just you know nah just put it all away just buried it until he saw he was at college and he went to a bookstore and he saw communion on the bookshelf and there's this picture of the gray the alien and it's exactly the what he saw in his bedroom and he dropped the book on the floor and, it, and he, he, he was like, boom, wait a minute, this talks to me. Wait, that was real. And everybody, when they saw that book at that time, who had had experiences, had that same thing. Oh, my God, that's the face. That's the picture I saw. That's, the, that's what I saw. That's an experience I had. And Whitley put his address, uh, you know, P.O. Box in the back of the book, just thinking maybe one or two people might read, and got inundated with thousands, tens of thousands of letters over the time of people who had had those experiences and how delighted they were that they weren't crazy, <laughs> you know, that they, it was some justification to what they had. And he gave all those letters to Stanford University. And Jeffrey Kaipel has, uh, you know, talks to us about those and has access to all those letters. It's unbelievable stuff. So, um, you know, that's how we sort of like, start with episode one and then it gets into the Whitley Strieber story in episode two where it's uh, where it gets more about experiences it's just this sort of natural progression into then out of body experiences and back into sort of like tying everything back up in in four and uh, ending up you know with remote viewing and some other things but you end up sort of like coming to a not a conclusion but you know a play you know the, so this is where we stand I mean the most difficult thing for us was the, that that there's more information come out when we were finished with what we were doing and we were mixing and coloring. You, know, you see like 10 new other stories and go, oh God, why can't we put this in? Can we get this footage? <coughs> so that, you know, there's a lot of that happens at the end, but it's, uh, it's just a natural progression from UFOs into experiences, into outer body experiences and how somehow it's all connected. And it's all to do with the mind at the end of the day. I think if I can underline that again, I think it, it mirrors a lot of ways that new people come to the to, to the party, especially in the last five, six, seven years, right? I think it's very easy to be intrigued by the kind of machines in the sky uh, aspect of this, right? The, the pilots see something, they've recorded something, radars caught something. What is it? I think if you if you get it, uh, intrigued enough by machines in the sky, you have to take the next step eventually and that's the the one that's totally confusing right and 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 that i remember for me it was like learning more about john mack right this guy who was uh, seemed like a regular psychologist sociologist wanting to know like 
why these, these group of people who have claimed to have had experiences, wh what is connecting them in their, in their experiences? How are they connected, even though the, the experiences themselves are all individualized, right? And he's just asking questions. When, when you buy in or get into the machines in the sky theories, you tumble into abduction. <laughs> like that's the next thing. And that's a lot harder to, to, to take on. Right then, then a pilot recording something in, in the airspace. Mm. When you get to abductions, that opens the the world for everything else. Near death experiences, remote viewing, what our mind is capable of, different dimensions. Which, uh, you know, by the way, is not like quack physics. It's it's classic physics. It's Nobel Prize winning physics, string theory, and the the, the ability to have multiple dimensions, the multiverse, all around us at all times. So. Using this, uh, you know, this paradigm on this story, the UFO slash unexplained what is beyond story, I think is intriguing. And that's the world we're living in today where you don't have to be laughed at for looking at it. And so you have a lot of smart people doing that. And I think, you know, to, to promote those people or put them up and say, look, look at what's happening here in our world is, is important. Like you both said very well, the, the clue in the title, you know, beyond UFOs and the unknown, there's a lot of interconnected phenomena, which isn't necessarily all different things. It could all be very, very much linked. But I wonder, are there any elements of this phenomena you decided to not include or were hesitant to include for any reason? No, I'd say if we get another season, we'll include them there. <laughs> you know, the only yeah. thing that stopped us was was uh, real estate, you know, time. Uh, you can only say so much and do so much uh, within, you know, an episode or, or, or a telev television program. There's so much about our world that's unknown. And, you know, we tried not to, you know, make short shrift of, of these topics. We want we want people who have both experienced these things or are looking into them seriously uh, and and we're we're looking to them to see what they've learned, what what they've experienced, what has happened in their lives, uh, and what the future may hold. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so much. You know, we know that we don't know, right? So, mm -hmm. it, it, and we're finding out more and more. There's uh, more people coming forward. More videos are getting released. Some of them from the uh, Navy videos, uh, other things that people are capturing because everyone's got a camera on their hip so everyone's seeing something and filming something you know other people they got their drones and these things are in three frames this thing flies through but when you you know what was that it would just zip through here like at the speeds of god that you can't fathom uh, we don't we're unaware of that technology but if you think about it you know the, the uh, stealth bomber came out 30 plus years ago we didn't know anything about the ta that technology and then it came out. That was thirty years ago. What have they got now? You know, that's mm. that's the key. Um, what, so we have no idea what could be us, what could be them, uh, or could be something else. And then obviously the theory of interdimensionality makes that suddenly that all those distances that are impossible to tra traverse in any kind of physics that we understand with interdimensionality that suddenly becomes an option now, and it's a little easier for everyone to understand. Um, and also, if you work in the film industry, you can make a fortune out of it by getting all your characters together from five different films. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, so I, I, you know, but the, it's a ever evolving thing now. Once the genie came out of the bottle, he's just like, "There's something else for you to look at. There's something else." We're seeing so much more and more. As Mark was saying, so many more people are so willing to come forward more. Uh, people in different areas in every uh, part of life are willing to get involved and uh, have a look and find out a bit more because they've had an experience that they're not afraid to talk about. You know. So I'm intrigued to know with two very different tenures of involvement in the UFO topic, Mark, I'll come to you first as the, the newbie, let's say the more casual interest. Was there any long-standing belief or thoughts you had on the topic that once you'd finished making the series had totally changed? Well, I think certainly you're more open to it. It's not that I had dismissed anything as a younger person. You know, I, I remember, you know, being fascinated by the Bermuda Triangle as like a teenager and reading the books like, what's going on here? And of course, Close Encounters just blows your mind completely. 
Uh, and when you're my age, you know, it's, it's uh, almost a miraculous film. You're just gobsmacked by the whole thing. I would not say that, it, uh, you know, it changed any long held beliefs or anything like that. I will say sitting across, I feel very blessed and very fortunate. I'm sure Paul does too, you know, to sit across from Jacques Vallée for three hours and ask him questions, you know, only a small portion of that can go into these films. Uh, it, it is striking, you know, uh, the same with all of our guests, you know, for example, Whitley Strieber, I don't know how you could not take what he has to say seriously ba based on the way that he uh, communicates with you. Uh, and I hope that comes across in the episode. Uh, you know, that's that's a very serious man who who something happened to him in his life that he can't explain. And he's explaining it as best he can. And I think that's what any of us would want to do. Um, but there's no doubt that, it, uh, you know, something happened to him and, and, you know, whatever it was, his talent and his ability to communicate opened a portal for so many more people, tens of thousands of people to reach out to him and say, something happened to me that I can't explain either. And so I think that's valuable in our world. And, and, um, I wouldn't say, you know, um, you know, I, I changed like the flip of a coin or anything like that. I, I think I have a lot more respect for the unknown than maybe I did before I did this series. Uh, and a lot more respect for, for those who've tried for, for years and for decades to communicate that stuff to the rest of us. Same to you, Paul. Yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've always been in. I, I, you know, I've been in since I was a kid, as long as I can remember. I'm like, they're definitely uh, people from another planet. I'm guarantee that's happened you know that's for real and then the movies come out that make it feel like it's absolutely of course there it is you know so um i i've I, then my wife tells me her story i mean she's driving it's a little bit one of those rural ones where it's a, you know it's out of the blue she's driving in the middle of the night in texas she's in the back seat asleep uh friends asleep on the other side two guys in the front seat and everyone's dozing they're uh, coming back from a gig or something and driving back home through Texas. And suddenly the guy screams out, hasn't got regulation lights, hasn't got regulation lights, and wakes everybody up. And they look out the window and there's this craft in sort of a pinkish light, cigar shaped type thing, just right beside them, traveling beside them, and then ends up in front of them and stops over the freeway. And they drive right underneath it. She turns around and looks back and they like a split second, uh, gone. And, you know, that was her experience to hear that, you know, and then she had another one in the, uh, up in the mountains where she was uh, looking out over the mountains and saw one. I, you know, I, I'm totally convinced. Just, or I was already convinced. Then, you know, your wife gives you an experience that, that tells you about something that you, why would she lie to me? You know, uh, there's no, it's nothing to gain. Um, it's interesting, the guy in the front seat doesn't have regulation lights. He doesn't want to talk about it, won't acknowledge it won't say that it happened. Um, the other guy doesn't want to talk about it, but, you know, confirmed, yeah, that's how, when she told him what she remembered, he said, yeah, that's what I remember too, but didn't want to discuss it any further. So it's interesting how it does affect people, you know, it, it, it continues with uh, that thing. I think what changed with my perspective a little bit was because of this more knowledge, more about it being the brain. Now I, I'm, you know, I'm not 50-50, but I'm, I'm more intrigued to what it could be. I don't know now as much as I was convinced it was aliens, but I'm, um, you know, from by all accounts, they're, they're among us. Maybe they're all accounts. They're, they're here, they come and go. Um, you know, the technology that we're seeing, these people are seeing something that we're not supposed to know, have that no one's claiming the knowledge of that you would have to have scientists working outside of, science world and keeping scientific secrets away from other scientists, which just seems like a bit of a strange thing as well. I'm not saying it can't be done, uh, you know, for covert mm. reasons, but you know, so that what it could be anything. I'm, I'm open to everything, you know, and the more I see, the more it doesn't convince me that they're not here, you know, or they're not real. So, but again, I, what I love is what Putov says, right? Putov says, we're seeing things that are beyond our science, right? Right. Yeah. They're, not, they're not beyond our physics, right? Physics is about theories, is about, uh, you know, uh, figuring out a way things could work hypothetically, right? Uh, and he's very clear that it's like, you know, we don't know how to 
to make it or how it's made or how the, the science of it works, but it's certainly not beyond our physics of what we think is possible. And that is key. Was the timing of this series dropping around a congressional hearing on UFOs or UAP just a happy coincidence? Definitely. I mean, we. I, I think we heard that there was a uh, potential of it coming while we were doing our early interviews, and then obviously um, uh, the hearing happened. There was there was more information on the back of that, and then the you know there was the strange thing with Kurt Patrick leaving and, and sort of dropping the bomb on everyone and, and kind of sort of like saying poo pooing the idea and um, for some reason tr throwing people under the bus that, that they were telling lies and everything they were lying about these things so you know that happens while we're in the midst of it so we're lucky enough to have that you know you can't plan for things like that that's what's great about the art of that we do is you have a set idea okay we're going to talk to x y and z we didn't know we were going to get put off until late on, later on which was a fantastic ad um but <clears throat> you plan to get you're going to talk about these things but you never know what they're going to give you and you never know what's going to happen so that's and when when that happens in your uh, world it's like it adds a bonus it's just a plus so we were very lucky that a lot of these things happened at a perfect time for us do you see this series as more entertainment or I think a lot of folks, especially entrenched in the UFO lore or topic, want to see documentary makers and journalists and whatnot that they've got a duty to inform the public on what is likely to be the biggest story in the history of mankind that I know this is a, the old UFO trope, but any year now could break that we find out officially we're not alone. There's a non-human presence here, whatever you want to call it. And you guys could be at the forefront of that with one of the most recent and up-to-date documentary series. Do you feel there's a, a responsibility there with this type of series? I actually think there's a responsibility for both because you can't get a lot of people to watch unless you're entertaining. That, that doesn't, yeah. that's, that's not just the UFO subject. That's every subject under the sun. And Very moon fair. When, yeah. when you're talking about documentaries. So, you know, we want to be entertaining. Um, and I think part of entertainment is intrigue, uh, making piquing people's interest and making them wonder what is happening. What, wh who are these people? What, where did this guy come from? And, and then learning their history and learning who they are. So I think it's a little bit of both. At the same time, I, I dare anyone to, to say that, you know, the stuff that we put in this show is not heady. It is heavy duty, uh, intellectualized stuff <laughs> like Working with it in the edit bay was pretty hard because you, you want to respect uh, the the kind of thought that Jacques Vallée or Hal Putoff or Gary Nolan has put into these things. And, you know, the interviews, I mean, they were hard for me to comprehend at times sometimes because they take it to a deep level in terms of their intellect. Uh, and, and to try to make that in a package for the general public to take on board is pretty hard, especially when a lot of the things they're talking about you know, don't really have visualizations, right? There, there's just uh, small bits of archive or pieces of evidence here and there. Um, and you're trying to paint a picture for people to understand what uh, Valet is talking about when he says, I created databases of uh, witnesses over decades across the globe. Yeah. And, and, and this stuff is still, um, you know, highly classified in the U.S. government. But there's 260,000 reports of something that we can't explain they're in a database that you could you could actually look through the numbers and, and try to find out something about the, the the distance between the places the time between the incidents if there are waves of incidents as he as he suggested his early research research showed what those waves might mean so it is very heady it's very intellectual um, uh, so there's a bit of both but I think our, our duty is both entertain get people in, and then inform and educate and try to be at the cutting edge of what people know. Uh, I mean, exactly. Uh, the thing is, it, it came late to us, right? There are, there are plenty of uh, information. What Jacques Vallée did, did was his research into the stories and then dissecting the Bible um, and other stories in the Bible uh, and other events that have happened through time that we put down to you know, angels or, you know, other things that we sort of believe in, then 
you can re you suddenly look at them again and listen to what he's actually saying, like Ezekiel, um, this w which we talk about in the show, and uh, that that totally sounds like he was picked up by a craft and left somewhere else. You know, the, so you have that expanse of things going through time. But why do people suddenly start want to look up in the first place? You know, um, and that's because once the space program hit and the um, Russians launched uh, something into the sky, we all started looking up a lot more. And so that that's why you had a period of that period, a lot more UFO sightings. And there were reasons throughout time why there are these spikes in sightings and uh, then quiet periods and you know the ratings and where they're seen and who's seeing are we seeing the same thing did that person see it here and like five minutes later it's across the country and they're seeing the same whatever so there's all those things that are all in this database that have to be correlated and are still being discovered and those graphs and those patterns are, are constantly being um, found out so you know, it's just always intriguing and there's always more to know, you know, getting Gary Nolan in to look at brain scans. That is a whole, opened up a whole new uh, way of looking at things and understanding things. So, yeah, it's a fascinating time. It is. And over the next couple of months, the, the UFO community are going to be spoiled with quite a few documentaries that are dropping on various aspects of the UFO topic. So, Mark, if we have jumped in an elevator and you've got that floor floor zero to floor one pitch and I'm your exec and I'm saying, why should I be watching yours? What's it going to contribute and add? What are you saying to me between the floors? Well, I'm saying that uh, we, we would have uh, or we do have the the blockbuster all-star cast that has been featured in this storyline for decades now. I would definitely say that. Uh, and I would say uh, that uh, in our show, we want to look beyond just the UFO uh, to, to what it means to really be human, which could be a key to understanding all of this, the intimate dimensionality of the multiverse aspect of this, the way that near-death experiences might be related to someone who sees something in the sky. Um, remote viewing, near-death experiences, abduction stories, all this could be in one pot, not different pots. And I think that's that's the big draw for us. Anything to add to that one, Paul? Um, which floor are we going to? Yeah, uh, we're going to go to the second floor this time. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think it's exactly that. We have the greatest minds of generations talking about this the, the contemporary guys of today people like jay king who you know his experience was only like 10 12 years ago um you, you know to the jack valets and the hal putos who've been there through everything project blue book all the remote viewing stuff that they've done with the cia in the 70s and the 80s at stanford all these other programs that they have been entrenched in decade after decade we have those people we have the scholars we have the government we have the pilots so it's you know it's fully inclusive of everything and it will give you a, a really um it will give you an insight and give you something to think about that you'll you know make you think more than when you started watching the series it will give you a, a perception to you know, answer some questions and create more questions just before i let folks know once again how they can watch the series one thing i have been asked by many folks is when are they going to be able to watch this in other countries that aren't the us Got me on that one. <laughs> I was going to say, that's above my pay grade. Yeah. Uh, exactly. MGM Plus, I mean, I, if it's on MGM Plus and MGM Plus is an, a worldwide thing, then potentially um, it will be available uh, across the globe. But it depends who carries the MGM Plus content, you know, who has the, uh, the international uh, distribution for that. I've not had that conversation, uh, to be honest. So, uh, sadly, I can't answer that. But... Um, in you know, the world we live in today, though, I would find it hard to believe it won't make its way across. Exactly. The world. And uh, oh, just get yourself a VPN and get MGM Plus, and you can. I didn't say that. Yeah, that's not we, we, we can lump <laughs> that in as one of the unknowns as part of the series. <laughs> yeah, there you go, gents. Um, but listen, thank you so much, gents. Beyond UFOs and the Unknown series premieres this Sunday, October twenty seventh. 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. And it's four episodes running weekly through to November 17th. Uh, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Paul, for your time. And best of luck with the series. And hopefully you do get that follow-up series and we get to see a little bit more from you both. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time.
Yeah, enjoy the show. Enjoy the series.